I love this show. I have probably watched more episodes of this show than most shows. So I was pretty excited for this. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. So this is a really cool opportunity for me to, one, talk about Impractical Jokers, a show that I just, I've never really talked about on this channel because I normally do scripted things or biographical films or documentaries, but I never really get a chance to talk about these kinds of shows. But today it's not just Impractical Jokers, it is Impractical Jokers the movie. If you guys are fans of this show, let me know in the comments down below. And if you were excited for this, I would love to hear that as well. So this is the story of a humiliating high school mishap from 1992 that sends the Impractical Jokers on the road competing in hidden camera challenges for the chance to turn back the clock and redeem three of the four Jokers. So we have Q, we have Mur, we have Sal, we have Joe. Uh, this is the crew that I just, man, I love this show so much. They have such a great time, and even if every skit doesn't land, for the most part, they do, but even if everyone doesn't land, you always get a nice moment with their friendship. You can tell these guys have been friends for quite some time, and the fact that Murr is just kind of the guy that is constantly getting picked on, almost like a, a Jerry from Parks and Rec. I'm watching Parks and Rec right now, and uh, but you look at what Murr has done for this show. I mean, it was his idea to do the show in the first place, and he really is kind of the brains behind the operation. I loved everything about this concept, turning it into a film. It all comes down to how did they mesh, because movies like this are always going to do a scripted portion where there is a story to get them to these points where they can actually be the impractical jokers, and then the impractical jokers moments that we know and love. Let's start there. Everything about these skits that they did, from the beginning when we get our Santa Claus to <laughs> my personal favorite uh, when they're interviewing to be a part of the Atlanta Hawks organization, and those moments in the film, oh my goodness, especially Joe's moment when he... <laughs> He's, I'm not going to spoil what he does, uh, but at one point he leaves the interview, and that is probably the hardest I've heard a theater laugh all year. All of those moments, all of those skits, when they get every single person on the trip, because there's going to be a moment when Q gets his, and he has to do something silly, when Murr has to do something silly, when Sal... We all know Sal is funny when he gets stuck in these situations. His moment in particular was so, so great, but uh, those are what we're here to see, right? This is the reason why we're watching Impractical Jokers, the movie. And those moments, some of the funniest things I've seen all year, on the big or small screen. I was laughing harder than I've laughed in 2020. That's how you do it, guys. That is common. For me, that's common. If you're not a fan of the show... One, why are you watching this review? Two, why are you watching the movie? <laughs> there are just, there are so many things about this show that appeal to a certain niche or, or, or a group of people that accept this kind of humor because they're messing with people. But they're also messing with each other. And they're not afraid to play on the fact that it's ridiculous what they do in nature, but it's hilarious to an outsider's perspective. And I always say, I have three friends, Devin, Chris, and Sam. I, I always said, guys, this would be us. If we were up for doing things like this and if we didn't have day jobs and we didn't have wives and all of these things, we would be doing this kind of thing, right? But we can't. These guys, they get to make a living off of doing this. So that aspect of the movie paid off, paid dividends, and if that was the only thing about this film, I probably would have rated it higher. But it would have also maybe compromised the experience because you have to get from point A to point B to point C. So they had to have a through line. And I'm not going to lie. The scripted stuff... It's a bit awkward, right? I love these guys. They're hilarious. Clearly, acting isn't what they're best at, but they were funny. They weren't actually the issue because they're back and forth. Sometimes it fell flat, uh, but most of the time, you, you just love them so much, you don't necessarily care. It was more the storyline and, and the fact that Paula Abdul's inclusion in this movie, because that's where it all started in 1992, uh, with Paula Abdul, the inclusion of her... And a couple of lines from her, and I have nothing against Paul Abdul, but that aspect just came off as really awkward for me. And I think they may have focused on it just a bit too long. If they would have done five minutes at the beginning, maybe five minutes in the middle, five minutes at the end, sure. But it's like 15 minutes in the opener. And I love what they did at the beginning. So they are their 1992 selves, but they don't de-age. They don't have the technology to do that. So it's just them, right? It's them and cost. And it's so self-aware. And that's why... 
I'm not going to give the entire scripted portion a pass, but that's why I can give the movie as a whole a pass because they know what this is. They know it's ridiculous. They don't care. And they say it multiple times. They break the fourth wall. They're like, well, come on. We know what's going to happen. We, we know how this plays out, how this shakes out. We're going to give our own movie a three and a half stars. Joe says that at one point. So they understand that it's, it's not being made for that portion. I just think they spent too long on that portion. So if as fans of the show, you guys can get past that part and kind of ignore the fact that some of those moments are a bit cringeworthy and Paul Abdul stuff, you're just like, ah, and then the, the moments at the end. But thankfully, once they get into it after that 15, 20 minute mark, the majority of the movie is what we love. The majority of the film is the Impractical Jokers, whether it's the Atlanta Hawks thing or where the car is on the side of the road. That was hilarious. Or <laughs> when Q has to go up and give a presentation and there's something that has to do with... Uh, I, I don't even want to say what it is because it caught me so off guard. So those moments were fantastic. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but I encourage you, if you're fans of this show, to go watch this movie. At the end of the day, I found it super entertaining. I laughed. A bit of cringeworthy stuff, but I got past it. So approaching this from a critical standpoint, I'm somewhat faced with the dilemma. Looking at it from a filmmaking perspective, it's a bit amateurish. You know, the, the camera movements are kind of bad. The editing is choppy here and there, left and right. But you also have to look at the fact that the movie knows what it is. It knows who its audience is, and it didn't take itself too seriously. And because of that... I can, uh, I can happily say I was entertained, and that's really all that matters with a movie like this. So I'm going with a pretty solid score. I mean, before I do that, if you guys enjoy this video, if you like what we're doing on this channel, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. 70%, 7 out of 10 for Impractical Jokers, the movie. I know, guys, Austin, he's supposed to be a film critic. Listen, this movie did what it was supposed to do. It knows its audience, and because of that, I enjoyed it. I got what I wanted out of it. I laughed really hard in the theater. So thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to come back for more Netflix reviews later on today. I'll see you guys soon.